Hi, everybody. Let's talk about this. Yeah, football. Well, more specifically, the news that uh, there's been a, a big schism suddenly emerged in the football world. And we read that England's big six football teams face expulsion from the Premier League as the European Super League plans are unveiled. And this is <clears throat> following the news that Manchester, the two Manchester clubs, uh, Liverpool and three London clubs in the form of Chelsea, Arsenal and Spurs have announced they are joining clubs in Spain and Italy to form a new tournament. And uh, this is uh, this is met with uh, this incredible uh, sort of screeching from the footballing establishment and indeed the political establishment. So we have this notion that, first of all, the Premier League would ex would expel these six clubs. What a lot of rubbish. If they did that, where do you think the money would come from to sustain the Premier League? Do you think teams like, I don't know, uh, Southampton and, uh, and Newcastle are going to generate the same kind of revenues for the Premier League as Manchester United and um, Chelsea and Liverpool, Man City? Of course not. <clears throat> this is just wishful thinking. We also read that uh, UEFA, UEFA, are also condemning the uh, the 12 clubs who have signed up to this breakaway deal. Well, they can condemn all they want. It's not going to stop it. And actually, neither is this guy. Boris Johnson attacks the Premier League big six over the European Super League plans as the UEFA brand is a cynical project. Listen, Boris Johnson, there was nothing more cynical than the Premier League when it was established in 1992, when it broke away from, if I remember rightly, the Football League, which is, was established in 1888. So this is just all so much garbage and nonsense. And this is what I wanted to talk to you about. You know, Three points I want to make here. In the first place, the, Prem the Premier League was a breakaway, but everyone was happy with that because it suited at the time back in 92. Well, now in 2021, this suits. And those that are bitch who are bitching about it misunderstand that times change and money has become absolutely central to football. The Football teams that are concerned uh, are mostly owned, in the case of the UK at least, by uh, three 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 um, companies who are headed by American businessmen who have ploughed in a lot of money and they want to see a return on their money. They know that by the effective marketing in this new European Super League, they will get the uh, they will get the money that they want, and so. Who's to blame them? And if people say, oh, well, we shouldn't let them uh, uh, own our clubs, well, then basically what you're espousing is a form of communism. So it's all about the money, point number one. Point number two, when it comes to the money, if you want to know who to blame, blame the football players who demand salaries into the tune of millions of pounds. Where do these millions of pounds come from, do you think? Do you think they're conjured up from fresh air? No. This puts an enormous pressure on the clubs to get the income to pay the greedy footballers and the greedy football managers and the rest of them. So there's a, there's a culpability there whether they like it or not. And third and not least, blame the fans if you're a football fan. Take a good hard look at yourself. I have no doubt that if this, when this league actually, not if, when this league gets off the ground, this European league, and regardless of where it's shown, Netflix or wherever, I believe that the fans will tune in to watch and to see the games between, say, Manchester United and Barcelona or, you know, whichever combination of uh, clubs it is. They, they will be quite happy to, uh, to tune in to, to watch that because they support their team and because it's going to be an interesting game. And yes, it's disruptive. Of course, I understand it's disruptive. You have my sympathy, football fans, for the disruption. And yes, it undermines the pyramid scheme that that is at the heart of the British football. But so what? Tough. You know, at the end of the day, the, the football exists and these big teams exist to make money. And that's what people need to understand. Football became a monster a long, long time ago. I would suggest certainly in the in the the early 90s and actually it became at that time so expensive to own a football club and to operate a football club that that's why investment had to come from outside the game 
So these are money men who own football clubs now, on the whole. And they exist to make a return on their money. And if an opportunity like this comes along, they will take it. So please, football fans, I hate to say it to you, mightn't be a popular one for, for me, this one, but, you know, start stop crying your eyes out. This is the monster that you've created, and now it's just gobbling you up in a different way. So that's my thoughts. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Make sure you follow me on brand new tube, folks. You've got to unhook yourself from the fixation of YouTube. Go to brand new tube and follow me, and I'll catch up with you folks real soon.